Hello everyone, welcome to the cabin. My name is Mo, and this is an in-depth character design video. I have 17 characters to design for a story I'm working on, and I've only designed five of them so far, one of which being the character we're designing today named James Cooper. If you're unfamiliar with me or my content, I'm known for making comics and character designs online, and I've been doing that since 2016, and my character designs have improved a lot since then. Or I'd like to believe they have. The character design process that I came up with mostly focuses on the use of trial and error. This isn't a professional technique. I don't know how professionals do it. I'm not a professional. This is just a technique that I came up with after designing characters for like five years and not really knowing what I was doing. And you know, it helps me a lot. I don't know if this has been done before or not. It probably has, I don't know. Um, this is just how I design my characters. And if you'd like to use this technique, you are more than welcome to. So usually if I don't know what I want the character to look like, I will start off by trying to design their hair. But like last video, I already knew what I wanted James's hair to look like. James is the older brother of Ronnie Cooper, another character of mine. I made a process video for her as well. Um, but both of them are Hispanic coded and I wanted to represent that through their hair texture. Whereas Ronnie's hair is supposed to be curly and more coiled, his is more wavy. Um, they are siblings, so they do look similar, but there are elements about them that are different because they aren't twins. So, you know, their colors are slightly different and their hair is a little different, but if you look at them side by side, they do look like siblings. I honestly really like how he looks with wavy hair. It's different, but it suits him a lot better. James was intended to be Hispanic ever since I started a very old comic of mine called Ameliorate, which you cannot find anywhere. <laughs> it is lost to the void, but I do think I started it in either late 2017, or early 2018, and he was intended to be Hispanic in that comic. And it's kind of been that way ever since, but I never really experimented with different uh, hairstyles for him So that's what I wanted to do here and I think it works for him very well So as I said before I knew what I wanted his hair to look like but I wasn't sure about his colors I don't have a lot of characters that are biologically related to each other The only characters that are biologically related to each other are Luna and Scott who are twins and James and Ronnie So I don't have a whole lot of experience when it comes to designing relatives So I didn't know how I should go about choosing his colors because I wanted him to look very similar to Ronnie in the sense where you could tell that they were related, but I didn't want to just use the same colors for him. So what I did instead was I put his original colors at the side as usual as a reference. I color picked from Ronnie's reference sheet, but I made a point to myself that I wasn't going to use those colors. Instead, I was going to alter the colors slightly and choose from the other two options to start the next row. And from that point on, it was the usual color picking process. If you don't know how I go about color picking, I essentially choose one color and I alter that color slightly and choose between the three different shades which one I like the best. Then I take that color and start the next row and I continue that process until I'm at a point where my perfectionism is satisfied. <laughs> color picking is my favorite part of the design process, especially for the skin and hair. I just think it's really fun and I like experimenting with different colors and shades. Usually I'll know what I want the character's skin and hair tone to be, but sometimes I don't and when I don't, it's even more fun because I get to experiment with a lot of stuff. For picking colors of eyes, skin, and hair tone, I start off by drawing a small bust of the character since that's all I really need. And then I go in order from skin, hair, and eyes. Every time I pick one of the colors from the row of three, I make sure to put a red dot next to it so I know which one I chose and I can see what my process was. After I have the hair and skin tone picked out, I take a small section of the face and copy and paste it into a second canvas where I will then do the eyes. It's essentially the same process, but for the eyes, I don't usually pick a tone out of the row of three and then start the next row. I just continuously alter the colors over and over again until I see something that I like and I stick with that. It's less organized, but again, for the eyes of the characters, I usually know what I want. Depending on how many swatches I come up with and how much I struggle with the colors of the character, this could take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half. After I have all of my base colors picked out, I then create a base for the character itself. Not wearing any clothing though, because this will be the base for the clothing designs. Clothing design is my least favorite part of this whole process, but having an idea of what the trends are in the world makes it easier. Also, knowing what your character's occupation is might help you come up with an outfit for them. For example, my character Jemmy Finch is a construction worker, so I added a wrench on her leg. It isn't a huge element to her design, but it's enough of a detail that if somebody sees it, they can connect it to her being handy. James, on the other hand, is a clockmaker or a horologist. What he does is fix and sell clocks and knickknacks. And so to represent his occupation through his design, I gave him a magnifying glass on his goggles and slapped a bunch of clocks all over him. It's a pretty predictable design element, but it works and I like how it looks. Also, James is a character that I'd say is pretty haunted by the passage of time. So him being a clockmaker kind of makes sense. Of course, if the story ever sees the light of day, you'll understand why James is so consumed by the passage of time. But until then, that's all you're getting. Anyway, I haven't really talked much about James himself. I've been mostly talking about the design process. So let's change it up here. 
James, as I said before, is Ronnie's older brother by about six years. I'm trying to think of what I can tell you without giving away parts of the story. James is also the romantic partner of Jemmy. They've been dating for three years. James and Jemmy have been a staple couple in my series for a long time. In 2016, when I wrote Fantasy, my first ever comic, they were very obviously in love with each other, but it was very badly written. I don't like it. Then after that point in Ameliorate, they were intended to be engaged. Then in Camaraderie, my next comic after Ameliorate, they were back to being just pining best friends. But every time I wrote their relationship, it really didn't feel right and I couldn't tell what it was. Until I wrote Road to the Remedy, which was my most recent comic. When I started that comic, they were intended to just be friends who had a crush on each other, but I decided that it worked a lot better if they were already established as a relationship and just didn't really make a big deal about showing their affection to each other. They're the kind of couple that are just existing with each other. They're not really bothered by showing too much affection, they're just kind of existing with each other and they're comfortable with that. They're a very casual kind of relationship, like they don't, they're not stressed about showing affection and doing PDA and stuff like that, which honestly, I think that comes from me and my experience. <laughs> I might be projecting my relationship onto them, but that's fine. Projecting is okay. Anyway, my point is, Jemmy and James are in love and they've been in love ever since 2016. <laughs> my beloved little straight passing couple. It's funny, they're, they, they look like they're just a straight couple, but like they're both bisexual and Jemmy's non-binary, so. I don't think I confirmed that they identify as non-binary. She does, but I don't think I ever confirmed that they do. And this comes the point in the video where I'm running out of things to talk about. So let's talk about the clothing. Clothing, as you know, is my least favorite part of this whole design process. I hate it. I hate doing clothes and I usually have to edit out a lot of this section because I keep pausing because I keep scrolling through Pinterest looking for ideas. I don't know if you've ever edited a speed paint before, but it can be really tricky. I remember back in the early days of my YouTube career where I'd just slap it into Movie Maker and speed it up by 500 times and just slap some music onto it, upload it, don't care about any of the editing. If there's pauses in there, sucks to suck, I guess. For many years, James' character has had rolled up sleeves. It has been a staple about his character, so I knew I wanted to keep that element in his design. This element also kind of pushes the idea that he's a little handy. I don't know why, but in my mind, when I see rolled up sleeves, I'm like, they work with their hands. But another element he has always had since the very start is that he's always had like a purple kind of shirt, but it doesn't look purple. Like it, it's, it is purple, but it, kind of looks more on the gray side, but it is purple. And I'll be honest, I really wanted to keep the purple, but it just didn't look right. And I think I know why. I think it's because blue and purple are very similar. And when they're put in a design really close to each other, it can look kind of messy. I think is the word I'm looking for. They don't really complement each other well. And so when he has these bright blue eyes and this purple shirt, it didn't really look that great. I think it would have looked fine if there was more blue to him and then there was also purple. Like for example, his design and camaraderie was mostly blue toned. It was very grayscaled, but it was mostly blue toned. So his purple shirt was the only kind of warm color there. But now that he isn't mostly blue toned and he has like a warm colored skin skin tone and hair tone, it doesn't look as good as I thought it would. So after experimenting a little bit, I decided his clothes would look better if they were blue. And I'm kind of mad about this, and I'll tell you why. He is male presenting, and he's mostly covered in blue, and then Jemmy presents as female, even though they're non-binary, they present as female, and they're mostly covered in red. So, <laughs> standing next to each other, they look like a goddamn stereotype. This is bullshit, but like, they, it looks good, so I don't want to change it because it the colors work, but they look like a stereotype and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that? Should I change it? Is it feeding into a stereotype? Is it not? Am I overthinking this? I probably am, but I'm not sure. Like, I don't know. I can't be my logic for a second, please. Can you explain to me? what I should do. <laughs> I don't know how I designed him in Road to the Remedy with the purple shirt and it looked fine, but I can't do that with this design. I don't know why. I'm probably gonna have to keep experimenting because I don't, I, I like how he looks, but I'm really bothered by the fact that it looks like a stereotype. Ugh, bullshit. Anyway, enough about the colors. Let me talk about the actual, oh, I'm bleeding. Oh, I picked a scab and I just run my hand over it and there's blood, okay. 
<laughs> I'm keeping that in. As I was trying to say, let me talk about the actual design choices. So he has gloves, which is a newer addition to his design in Road to the Remedy. He had gloves. That was the first time he ever had gloves. Um, he usually didn't because there wasn't any purpose for them. But now he's got some gloves because protection. It's kind of funny because Jemmy has fingerless gloves and she's a construction worker and that doesn't really protect much of your hands if you're fingerless. It's fine. He also has goggles, which again, were newer additions uh, in Road to the Remedy because again, protection. Jemmy at least has those. So he does live in the Veiled, so he has a steampunk type of clothing style. So I gave him this kind of vest and that he's wearing three layers. I just realized that he is wearing three layers of clothes. Four layers if you count the scarf. <laughs> He's wearing a black uh, three-quarter sleeve undershirt and then a white button-up over that and then a, a gray button-up vest over that and then... <laughs> I, okay, here, I'm just gonna create a piece of canon right now. He is always cold, which is why he wears so many layers. There you go. He's a cold boy. He gets cold. I'm looking at this and I'm realizing I kept a lot of design elements from Road to the Remedy because I really did like his design in that comic. Um, so I kept his belt with the two, like, things on the side. They're gold now, so I don't really know what they are, but I'm guessing that's, like, just another piece of storage on him where he just keeps more clocks <laughs> in case he comes across someone who wants to make a sale, so. I also kind of kept the design of his boots from Road to the Remedy. I changed them a little bit, but I kept the little... I don't even know what it is, but it's like a little ankle screw or something and then a metal something over top. I don't really know, but he has that. Now, a different thing is the undershirt, the vest, and the scarf. I have never drawn him. That's a lie. I was gonna say I've never drawn him with a scarf, but I have. I have drawn him with a scarf several times, actually. Never mind. I think the only time he had a scarf in a official comic was Ameliorate, which again, you can't really find anywhere, but he did have a scarf there. I think that would be another trick friend is wearing scarves. I... Every time I make a character, there's like three things that I usually give them. Boots, scarves, and chokers. I don't know why, they just look nice and I like drawing them. And goggles. And goggles. <laughs> I also like the fact that he and Ronnie both have scarves. It doesn't have any significant meaning. I just like, I just care about them a lot. All right, I have completely run out of things to talk about. There's nothing going on in my brain. So I'm gonna end this video here, trying to figure out my outro. <laughs> Since I don't have a comic to promote right now, I have to kind of redo my outro. You can find all of my socials on screen as well as in the description. I am very active on Instagram and I'm constantly asking you guys for opinions on things. So if you would like to follow me there, please do so. All of these designs also get posted on Instagram way before they get posted on YouTube. So if you want early access content, you can find it there. If you're feeling generous, consider subscribing. It could help put my work out there and that could bring me some pretty cool opportunities. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Keep my life, bright my lights. Bye!